Welcome to the Winter Wonder Sampler Sew Along. I'm your host, Heather Peterson. I'm gonna be walking you through how to make this fun sampler quilt. Um, I'm the designer of the pattern and my pattern company is called Anka's Treasures. So um, I wanted to tell you a fun little story about what inspired this pattern. And it was inspired by my youngest son, Max. I had made this table runner called Mr. Frosty and he told me it was cute, but he thought the scale of the snowman wasn't right. He said, nobody makes a tiny snowman like this. Mom, you need to design a pattern with a life-size snowman. And I thought it was a cute idea. And so that got me going on making a few sketches with the snowman, the snowflakes, and then a, fun, a few fun winter motifs going around the outside edge. This pattern was also inspired by my fabric collection, Winter, winter Wonder. I designed this for Riley Blake Designs. So let's take a little peek inside the collection. Let's see, there we go. There you can see all the prints and colors together. And it has a whole bunch of my favorite winter motifs. I'm from Minnesota. So we get to celebrate winter for longer than probably most of you. And so you have to look for ways to enjoy that long season and uh, fun things that you can do outside. And so I had that in mind when I did a couple of the prints from this collection. For example, this is the winter scene print and it has pictures of my sons and I doing some fun winter things. You can see us ice skating, um, getting a Christmas tree, building snowmen, going sledding. And then we have to have some cabins uh, because the best place to be in Minnesota in the evening is in by the fire in your cozy little house. So uh, that inspired the things that are in that collection or in that print. There's also um, a main print here and it doesn't exactly scream Christmas. So I think this is a quilt that you can keep out for longer than just the holidays. Um, this could be a poinsettia, but everything else is very generic. There's a little stitchy print, there's medallions, there's a little mini floral plaid, so there's a cute snowflake print and some dots. And um, there are also some wide backs that go with the collection that have big snowflakes because I love and anything snowflake. So um, once I designed that collection, then I needed a few patterns to go with it and decided to do a sew along for one of the patterns in the collection. And I chose this one because it has you know, the most to teach from as far as techniques with all the different things we're gonna learn how to do folded corners, half square triangles, how to make the elements of the snowman. We're gonna learn how to cut lengthwise borders. We're gonna learn how to cut and do the angles for the trees uh, with or without a template. Uh, so there's lots of fun things that I get to share with you from that. So the first thing you will need to start your sew along is the pattern. This is available on my website, either as a printed pattern or a PDF. You can also check out your favorite shop and see if they have it. Uh, you can also sign up to receive the emails if you're watching this video um, as the sew along is actually running. And um, if you signed up for the email, you would have gotten this introductory letter. It has a big picture of the quilt, so you can figure out exactly where I have each print. There is a supply list and a fabric requirements list. There is also um, the schedule. So I'm gonna hold this up to the camera and pause for a minute. So in case you wanna take a screenshot of that, you can. And at the bottom, it tells you what we're doing which week. So we're gonna start on August 5th, which is in a couple days from now, this Friday. And we're gonna run for about eight weeks through September 30th. So if you've signed up for the emails each Friday, you'll get an email with a link to the YouTube video where I talk about what we're doing this week. And that video is gonna stay on my YouTube channel so you can access this at any time. So if you fall behind in the schedule, not to worry, that video will be there whenever you want to work on your blocks or whenever you have time. So then let's talk about um, getting the fabric. You could use a 10 inch stacker. This is the 10 inch stacker of my Winter Wonder collection. And this is enough to make the blocks in the center of the quilt uh, to do the mittens and the trees and some of the elements of the snowman. Um, you would also need two red fat quarters for the scarf. You will need some background fabric and some border fabric and binding fabric. If you want an easy way to collect the fabrics, this pattern is available as a boxed kit from Riley Blake. You can see it has everything you need in there to make the project. So it comes in this nice little keepsake box. And in there you can see there's all your fabric and there's your pattern. 
So if you would like to do that, um, that's available again on my website or hopefully from your favorite quilt shop. And um, what I'm going to go through next is the supplies that you need. So we're going to move over into my studio and I'm going to shoot a video on that. And then following this, there'll be the instructions for our first week. Okay, I'm here in my studio now and I've got a few of my supplies laid out and I'm just going to talk about them quickly. Um, they're pretty basic. You know, you need thread and I like to use a cotton covered polyester. I don't use straight polyester because it can melt and I don't usually use just straight cotton though you could but I find that having the polyester core makes the thread a little bit stronger so that is my preference for that. You will also need a seam ripper and some marking tools. I like either the friction pen here which I will talk about a little bit in some upcoming videos and I also like the sew line pencils and you will also need a trim scissor this one is my favorite, it's made by Elon, and I like that it is uh, squishy. So it's very comfortable to work with and it has a short tip, so it's easy to maneuver for clipping threads or for cutting applique. You will also need some pins. I like these very fine um, glass head pins. So I've got those sitting here. You will also need an assortment of rulers and a rotary cutter. My preference for cutting is using the 28 millimeter rotary cutter. You could use the standard larger size, but I like the small one because it's very easy to um, use to cut pre-cuts because they're small pieces of fabric and you're going to be cutting individual squares rather than, you know, lots of strips and stuff. So it's much easier to maneuver when you're cutting those small pieces. I also have this rotating mat sitting here because I find those to be very handy for squaring up blocks. So I do use that a little bit in some of the videos that are up and coming. I also like these little boards. I'm trying to remember what they're called, just design boards, I guess. These are also from Riley Blake. And I use these as I'm cutting. I will lay out my blocks on them and then carry this over to the ironing station or my sewing machine or wherever I need them to go and everything stays nice and in order. They are covered with this um, uh, felt or batting and it makes the blocks stick. So it makes it easy to transport things. I also wanted to mention um, my iron. I use a steam tank iron because I love steam. So that is a must for me when piecing. And I also love the wool pressing mats. Um, so I have to have that for, for doing quilting. And I also have my wool pressing bar here. This is for pressing seams open. So I use that a lot too, especially if I'm doing small pieces and um, some blocks that need to have the seams pressed open. So there's your just basic supply list for getting going. So now we're ready to plan out colors and get to the sewing part. So we are ready to begin block one of our sew along for the Winter Wonder sampler. So the first thing you need to do is read through the instructions for that block and just make sure you understand everything. Then you're gonna to want to possibly plan ahead of where you want your fabrics going. So you can see I have my fabrics laid up on my design wall. I have them positioned where I want them to go so I have a nice even placement of color. And I also need to know for making this block which prints, which 10 inch squares I have two of because this pattern was designed using the Winter Wonder 10 inch stacker. So there's only certain prints that you get two of. And for our snowflake block today, we need two 10 inch squares to make one block. So I have gone through and figured out that these squares here, I have two of them in my pack. So I'll be able to cut the pieces I need to be able to make that block. So if you're not using the Winter Wonder 10 inch stacker, that doesn't really matter unless you're using a different 10 inch stacker and you um, need, again, those two 10 inch squares to make one block. So you're gonna need to plan that out ahead. So go ahead and set those pieces aside. Then you can get to the cutting and the sewing, which I will talk about in the next video. All right, we are ready to go ahead and get started on our first step for the sew along. And we are gonna be making these snowflake blocks here. And it's actually a very dreary winter day in Minnesota as I'm shooting this video. So it is rather dark, even though I have as many lights on as I can. But by the time this video is shown to you guys, it will be summer, but just know that now it is very dark and gloomy. And uh, I guess it is an appropriate day to be working on making a snowflake block as I'm doing this. So you can go ahead and turn to page two of your instructions. And we're gonna start on step one. So I've got my pieces laid out here 
And what you're going to start out with is you're going to take your two and five eighths inch triangle that's been cut in half diagonally and you're going to sew it together with this four and a half inch length of your background. So you're going to want to take a little care to get that um, perfectly centered on there so that this little overlap here is the same as this one. And if you have trouble eyeballing that, you can always take your piece and fold it in half and mark that spot either with a pin or oftentimes I will just make a little snip like so and do the same with your background here. And that way you have a little bit of a gauge. You can at least line up those two small snips and then that automatically should align on either end. But it is a small piece. I think you can eyeball it and still stay accurate, but this is a helpful tip for uh, future reference as well when you're working with bigger pieces. So go ahead and get that centered and then sew that on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So it will look like this. Then you're going to go to the iron and press toward the red, which is what I have done here. Then we're gonna go ahead and add another triangle onto the other side. And again, you can center that on there using that same method either, <clears throat> excuse me, either via eyeball or with the little snip method. And then you're gonna sew that with a quarter of an inch seam. And then you're going to end up with a piece that looks like this. So you should see, you know, equal distance from here. And um, in some cases, you may find that, you know, if you start sewing up here and sew this way, that's gonna push this point down. And when you turn it around and sew this way, that will push the opposite end down. And then you end up with one square being kind of up here and the other square being down here. So that is something to watch out for, um, just to be aware of that your machine, depending on what kind of foot you have on, like a, a dual feed or an even feed foot or just your standard foot, that is one thing that can cause this to be off. So on this one, you can see we have a little bit of that going on. So you may wanna just make one test block here first and look for that and see how you're doing. And then if they do end up being off with that piece working forward, then you can make some adjustments. One thing you can do is keep the bias edge. So on the red, this one is bias. If you flip that to the bottom while you sew, that will help keep that edge from shifting down. Um, the, the bad part about that is it's hard to see that your piece stays centered. So you might need to use a couple pins if that's happening but hopefully you won't have to worry about that and your pieces will be automatically lined up down there. Um, next, we're going to trim the block so that it looks like this. So I've got my little rotating mat here so I can show you how that's done. And I have my clear acrylic ruler and I have my small rotary cutter. Now I've mentioned this in my sew alongs in the past. I like to do any fussy trimming like this with the 28 millimeter cutter because it's a lot easier to see around when you're doing this fine tuning to your block as opposed to a big, huge blade like this that's hard to see what you're doing. So before you do any trimming, you know, you wanna get as lined up as you can with these two outside edges. You don't wanna be I'm just looking, say, for example, at these two corners and not out here and here, because you can see I have that laying kitty wampus, even though I'm trimming off the white. So make sure your block is as lined up with all of those points as you can. And then the other thing I try to do is I look at where the red meets the cream here along the edge, and it's at a half an inch. I want to make sure that it is also at a half an inch on this corner. Now, occasionally that will be off a little bit, so you might have to... Uh, fudge just a little bit on your trimming, especially if this block were to line up with say another block like this when you sew it together. It isn't in the pattern that we're doing, so it's not a huge deal, but I just mention it just to show you the method that I use for making this block just to try to ensure accuracy if possible. So there's our little block and that should finish out at three inches. Now what you're gonna do with that block, and this is moving on to step two, is we are going to sew a folded corner on our piece. We're gonna sew from corner to corner and then we'll flip and press and it will look like this. So I'll, I'll tell you the method that I use for folded corners. And in my past sew alongs, I've shown several different methods, somewhere you mark the machine, somewhere you cut the bias edge, 
And um, this is just my favorite and most accurate method, I think, is just to mark that line. And then when you're sewing, you're going to sew on the outside edge of this line. So not right down the middle, directly covering the drawn line. You're gonna sew to the outside edge. And how you know that it's the outside edge is this is the part you're trimming off later, so therefore that is the outside edge. And um, just to mention the marking tool that I used, I used this friction pen. And the thing that's cool about this is this ink will not bleed, like if you use a ballpoint pen, you get a nice defined line compared to like say if you used a mechanical pencil, sometimes those lines can be hard to see. But this you can definitely see, and once you iron it, the ink just totally disappears. So you don't have to worry about seeing that line later or having it bleed or anything like that. So you want to draw that line, and then you'll be able to stitch right on the outside edge of the line. And the reason I have you stitching on the outside edge of the line is to allow for the turn of the fabric. So if you typically, when you do these folded corners, if you end up, let's say, a little bit shy, like you can see that my top square doesn't meet this outside edge here, or actually what I need to say is once you flip it over, there you go. So you see how the, the, the square on top does not meet the outside edge? You can see the backside of that fabric sticking through. Um, I didn't sew far enough on the outside edge of that line to allow for the turn of the fabric, so it ends up being a little bit shy. So if you've been having that problem with your blocks, just always sew on that outside edge. It's not by much, you know, just a thread or so, and that allows for that turn so that you end up with a block that looks like so, where these corners all meet out here. Then what you can do is trim the underside off to a quarter of an inch, and you'll make four of each of these in um, your five different uh, color sets because we're making five blocks. So you can go ahead and do that part and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, we're ready to sew our snowflake block together. So you can see I have my little red corner squares that were three inches and I have my sashing pieces and a center square. And we're gonna sew those together in rows, which is what I have done here. So you're gonna sew in three rows like this. All the pressing is done towards the little cream pieces and that way this intersection here will nest when you sew those together. Now, after you sew them together like that, then your block will look like this. And that block should measure six and a half inches. And then we're going to sew a piece like that on, and then this piece will connect up there. And then when you're done sewing that, this block will proof out to 10 inches. So that's all you need to do this week is make five blocks like that. Um, if you have any questions for me on anything, you can leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you back here next week.